From Dragon and Line Podcast, I'm the host with the most, one more Sanchez, and joining me live on Zoom is the founder of Love Quest Coaching, Lisa Concepcion. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Lisa, for those people that are viewing, can you tell us a little bit about Love Quest Coaching? I'd be happy to. So Love Quest Coaching is a personal development firm that I founded in 2015 for love. It's for people who are going through dramas and traumas in their relationships, people getting over breakups, going through divorces, and they want that extra support, somebody who can coach them through it. It's also for people who are single and they may have some relationship patterns that they see happening over and over again that they finally want to get rid of and shift and transform. So if you think of it almost a Tony Robbins for love, that kind of thing, where you're going to be with somebody, me, one-on-one, -on -one, and we're going to just get really clear on why things are rolling the way they're rolling in your life and how you can heal a bunch of stuff and transform it so that you can thrive in relationships. Okay. What inspired you to be a uh, certified professional life coach? So prior to being a life coach, I was a marketer and a public relations strategist. I even worked for Grant Cardone for about an hour, a year and a half, 2013, 2014. So when working with Grant, I observed him and I, I worked very closely with him because at the time when I worked with Grant Cardone, his business was only, say we were maybe a staff of 20 to 30 people, if that. And so I was always day to day very close to him. So I saw what he was building. I understood the business model of it, at least what it was back then. And I always paid attention. And I then simultaneously was going through my own separation and my own divorce. And it was heartbreaking. And when it happened, I went into this terrible low of my life and I had to build myself back from it. I had to heal a bunch of stuff that that divorce really put to the forefront of my life. So in doing that and coming out the other side, I became very public about my journey. And so people on social media started to see me do what I called my 90 day divorce detox. So I was putting videos out about this and I was being very public about what I was doing. And I had to heal codependency, re-look at my childhood, get all these beliefs that I had completely shifted and changed and healed. Lisa, those who may be interested, what would be a typical session with you? And then what can someone expect? I start everybody off with a consultation. So what we do is actually give you a session. So you end up experiencing it and seeing and getting the value from it. So it is a paid session. So you could actually get the real deal. So I'm going to coach people on this initial session. They come away with clarity, with value. They get clear on certain things that questions that they had. And, and then they really get a sense of what it is like to have that coaching dynamic. And then at the very end of it, if I'm doing my job, which I, I like to say I do, and it is a fit, typically what happens is then they ask me, what if I want to do this more? Like, how do you work? What happens next? And that's when I tell them that it is a commitment of either a six week program or a 12 week program. And in that first hour long session that we do, I can ascertain which to recommend for them. Typically, if a person starts out with a six week program and they okay. get to six weeks and they love it and they want to continue more, they can, and they just keep going. I'm very flexible. That's what's great about having your own business, right? You could say, here's the one option, six weeks. Here's another one, 12 weeks, 12 weeks. You end, you want to continue, you can continue. So there's a lot of flexibility. Another thing that I offer flexibility about too, is everybody gets served in some way. So let's say people come to me and they're like, yeah, but I only have a budget for this. We're going to figure something out so that we can get you the help that you need. I've had situations awesome. where I've done that one hour initial session with somebody. They love it. And they say, Lisa, I have a budget of whatever. And then I say, all right, cool. So for that, I can do two more sessions like this. And then we can also do some email work and I can get you some journal stuff, things and books and tools and resources. Okay. And online seminars okay. and things. So I always can customize for people. It's not, it's an easy thing to do. Now, last year with the pandemic, has that impacted the business? 
luckily for me, I was a Zoom Zoom way before it became cool with COVID. Like, so uh-huh. I was doing this type of thing all over the world from like 2017. So I already had an ability to do that and coach people online. And that's really the primary way that I do coach. And there are rare exceptions. People find me locally here now in Sarasota and then we meet face to face. So and with COVID that's kind of changed too. So people just want to meet on Zoom. So that's why now, as far as dating goes, it has, it did, there was a funkiness going on with COVID for sure. People were like very isolated and alone. They didn't want to date necessarily. And then when they did, this is what was cool. People got really romantic. They got very romantic because it delayed the meeting face to face. Like you got to really get to know somebody on a two dimensional thing via FaceTiming or whatever, before you said, okay, listen, we're going to meet face to face. I'm getting a COVID shot. I'm going to quarantine for a few days. Like we're going to get this together so that we can meet. Uh-huh. So it's very intentional. It becomes very intentional. And then think about it. If you really, you have to really like somebody to go that route because otherwise it's not dating before where you could be like, oh, I met this chick on Bumble and then I met this one here. I'm going to go here and then I'm going to meet this one and you bop around and then you pick the one you like. COVID changed the game. People yeah. are like, wait, I got to get tested before I go out to meet this person. So they got to be worth it. So let me spend some time getting to know them. I had a client, a guy who was courting three different girls on FaceTime. And this man and I, we got such game for him. I said, no, honey, what you need to do is you have to do dinners together on FaceTime. He said, what do you, how do I do that? I go, You find out the Grubhub, you figure out what's her favorite food. You order it from the restaurant, you get it delivered to her house. You pay for dinner, nice, nice, nice. Then boom, eight o'clock, you're both sitting on the thing, enjoying the dinner. He was so cute. He lit candles, on music in the background. Meanwhile, they're like, she's in like a t-shirt and whatever. And he's, and he goes, next time we're going to even dress up. It was really cute. They really Mm. made the most of it. And when they met, it was great because they really did that preliminary courtship thing. Mm -hmm. So it prolonged sex. It was like they really grew to have a friendship first. It was really cool. Having that said, I'm 40. So now technology is involved where Mm -hmm. back in the day, a love letter, put it in their locker was the way to go or I'll meet you here at seven o'clock. How is that affecting the young generation? The younger generation, they have their own way of communicating. And uh, so for example, for us, and I guess you and I are within the same generation, I'm 10 years older than you, but pretty much the same generation. We remember a time when we had answering machines. Mm -hmm. And then we remember uh, like my family, like my mom and my dad, they didn't have answering machines. If you weren't there, you weren't there, done. You let the the phone ring and ring. If you're mad, you're looking at the phone. That's probably him, I'm not even gonna pick up. There's no caller ID, there's none of that. Uh Different game. So every generation, has an advancement with technology, an advancement with that, that impacts how we communicate. And we could look at the, you want to go way back in history, right? The automobile. Now you can forget it. You could date people far away. Now you can drive to somebody else. So everything, every technology impacts the way we relate to one another. So that not, definitely holds true for dating. Now what I see though, that younger generation, they're almost very, there's a lot of confusion I find with them about social, just relating to one another on a social level. You're dealing with a generation whose parents arranged play dates for them. Now I always thought that this was gonna backfire. I was watching that entire generation get raised because when I was 30 years old, that was the generation having babies. So I opted out of that whole mess because I saw what the parenting trends were like. And I knew I wasn't with that at all. I wasn't into that. If if my kid was six years old and bored, I'd be like, go on your bike and go call for your friend up the street. But that generation who are now in their twenties and thirties, blowing stuff up on the streets, they were coddled and they were overindulged and they were overprotected. And so they weren't really empowered to think for themselves. So they were hyper parented, helicopter parented, smothered. And now they want their institutions to parent them. And that impacts how they date. So it's a social anxiety. It's a hyper vigilance of self. It's a lot, a little bit of narcissism. It's a lot about feelings 
and not having the ability to cope. And dating is about rejection, right? You're not going to meet someone and hit it right right away. It's going to be like yeah. the person whose hand I hold when I die, right? Like 22. <laughs> so they need, they crumble, they fall in love and then they get rejected. And it's like, they don't have the coping skills to self-soothe and to deal with it. They end up sinking into drugs and depression. They want to look for external things to fill voids because they weren't given the ability mm -hmm. to fill it for themselves and to have that kind of resilience, emotional resilience, especially. So it's like you can't go to a safe space when your boyfriend breaks up with you and you're 25. You got to deal with it. You got to go to work the next day. You and you can't make a mixtape no more. What we're seeing with that generation is a, a massive arrested development. A lot of moving away from responsibility, a lot of entitlement, a lot of looking to people and situations and, and institutions to parent them still. They like to be parented. They like someone else telling them what to do and how to live under the guise of community and all being in it together. They don't understand I, sovereignty, liberty. Some of them do, some of them were raised that way. It really, de it really depends, but there's a lot of, that generation experienced a lot of indoctrination and a lot of just people telling them how to feel and it disconnects them from the truth of who they are. So they don't, they end up lost. They end up sad. It's very sad. And uh, switching gears a little bit, how do you know if you should stay with your romantic partner or cut the cord? So typically when that question is even asked, that means that there are some things in the relationship that you are observing that can go one of two ways. Either you can communicate on it and squish the beef, come up with some new agreements, and that could actually bring you closer, or you assess it and you see the actions of the person and their words and their actions aren't lined up, then you gotta go. You gotta do you. You gotta do you, boo-boo. You gotta be, <laughs> and if this person is not showing up the way you, you want them to or need them to, or there's disrespect, toxicity, they're saying one thing but doing another, they're not in integrity, and they're not aligned with your values, then you really need to serve yourself and honor yourself and do the right thing for you. Mm -hmm. That answers answer. your question. People. You gotta ask the questions. <laughs> I love like the hot seat, the people. Fair I enough. got a question. I was gonna ask you, what is a common myth about your profession or in the field that, that you would like to debunk? Ooh, this is a great question. So I think a lot of people don't understand how coaching differs from therapy. So a lot of times people get confused with that. And so that would be a good thing to clarify. So the way I describe it, cause I have done both and I actually collaborate with a bunch of therapists. Therapy is a great way to get to the root of why you are the way you are. A diagnosis, that's like the best thing. And the way I explain it is back when I was in the post-divorce or awfulness of my life, I went to a therapist and the therapist gave me the magic word of codependency and narcissism. And she gave me these words and I was like, okay. And, she, and explained to me, what went on in my childhood and all of these things from the past. So you're going to get a lot of clarity about that through therapy. Now, depending on the therapist, some do a hybrid of therapy and coaching, but the business model of therapy is to have them be your client indefinitely. Some therapists will be like, okay, maybe I'll see you for 12 weeks. And then you go and be like, doubtful because the business model, right? The different business model. Therapists accept insurance. So they're motivated by filling out the form to get insurance. So why would I, I would sit with my little pad and I'd just be somebody that you can talk to for an hour every week, but doesn't necessarily mean that you're moving from where you are to where you want to be. That's where coaching comes in. So coaching is intended to be shorter, super impactful, transformative, and measurable. So there's a beginning, a middle, and an end, Man. at least the way that I coach and coaches that I know in the industry. So the, it's, I came to you, please, because a therapist said that I have this. Oh, wonderful. But I want to go over here. There's a future version of me and that person is over here and they're chilling and making money and have a beautiful relationship and all the things that they want in their life. So my job and playtime, because I love what I do is to help that person deal with everything from over here with the therapy in their past, but in a way that makes sense of it so that they could transform it to move to the future. Meaning 
these beliefs about what happened to you when you were six, there is a way to go back to that version of yourself and show up for them in a way that heals it. So as opposed to, to being in therapy, talking about why the six-year-old is this and why you felt this and why you're still pissed at your mom and all this stuff, right? Coaching is, okay, what version of you is pissed at your mom? Not you on the phone with me now, you're a grown ass adult, 40 years old. <laughs> but there's a wounded version of you who's a little baby inside who wants nurturing and needs love and, and care and, and connection. And you're not getting that. So I'm gonna teach you how to show up for that version so you start giving it all the love and all the support and all the attention, affection, everything it needs. And you're not looking for mommy to do it or a relationship to do it or your job to do it. That only you can do it for you. And when that happens, then that, that, that empowerment, gosh, it, it changes everything. That's when that magical life over here starts shrinking, getting closer, closer, and you become that. So it's, it is very, when doing coaching, be warned, it is very common that when you start and you commit to this work, you will lose friends, you might end a relationship, you might call in a new relationship, you might get a raise, a bonus, I don't transfer to another city. Your life starts to shake up in, in very meaningful ways. And sometimes we assign a label as good or bad. I just like to say it all serves you. Even the things that seem no good, it serves you. I had an instance with a client where when we started, she was an assistant to a cardiothoracic surgeon. She was so burnt out on this job. And by the end of our coaching journey, she traded in the scrubs and the doctor thing and the gloves to beautiful dresses. And she started to become part of uh, medical device sales, selling the exact thing, tool that she used when she'd have somebody cracked open on the thing. So she could speak with stories. She was having dinners with doctors, meeting all these amazing people, completely changed her life. So it is possible that the life that you envision for yourself can be made manifest through this type of work. No, I appreciate it. That said a lot and helped a lot. Real quick, Lisa, b before I let you go, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Quick questions, quick answers, okay? All right, here we go. What is the most common things couples fight about? Money and sex. Why do smart professionals struggle with uh, dating and relationships? Because they think that they're above it. They think because they're so smart and educated, they do so great at work that relationships should come easy. Everything mm. else comes easy. I know how to make money. I know how to do well at work. So why is this such a struggle? They get frustrated. So they presume that it would be easy and that they don't have to really do the gritty, dirty work of, well, it's actually beautiful work of cleaning up the dirty. Gotcha. What is love to you? Wow, love is a gift that we choose to give to the world. What impresses you? People who have a vision for themselves and are tenacious and do whatever it takes to make it happen. Ooh, very well said. And then finally, what is something you want the viewers to take away? I would love anybody who sees this right now to know that you are seeing this because you are powerful and there was a message in here somewhere that was ex especially for you. And that's how loved you are, that out of the nothingness of the infinite boom right now on your Facebook or <laughs> on your podcast, on whatever, whatever means you're hearing this. so know that you are a powerful creator you are a powerful attractor and when you ask it is given it is done so have faith in yourself and know that you are divinely guided eternally loved and your worthiness comes from something higher than people that's awesome and uh, for those that are interested all the information is going to be down there on links how can they connect with you online so you can find me anywhere i'm on all social media platforms the best ones for me is instagram at lisa the love coach on instagram and also i have the lovequestcoaching.com website there's blogs there there's going to be a quiz up there soon right now i have a love life assessment up there but coming weeks there'll be a quiz and then i'll have even more quizzes and fun interactive stuff there and all of the um, programs that I offer and the way to get in touch with me and enroll is on there as well. Got you. And then finally, here at Dragon the Line, we like to support small businesses, local businesses. Is there anyone you want to give a shout out to? Yeah. Oh, wow. This is cool. I would love to give a shout out to a brand of fragrance 
called Kelly and Jones. I believe you can find it kellyandjones.com. And it's a line of fragrance for all the people out there who love wine and spirits. They take um, the sense of wines and they marry it with fragrance and it comes out gorgeous. And these fragrances last hours and hours and hours and they smell absolutely delicious. So I guess if you have a lady in your life and she wants something unique and she's into like rosé all day, you hook her up <laughs> with some of that. It's a great brand. It's very classy and it's entrepreneurial. It's, it's a, a woman and a team. I think she's in like upstate New York who awesome. does it. I'll put that information also on the bio for you. And then very last thing I always ask everyone that's on the show, is there anything that I didn't ask quickly that you want the people to know? Oh, you're so sweet. Wow. I think you covered it. We did a pretty thorough job. I told everybody where to find me, Love Quest Coaching. All the Instagram people can find me at Lisa the Love Coach. I have a YouTube channel. You search Lisa Concepcion on YouTube. 700 videos, tons of content. Yeah, definitely look for me. I look forward to connecting with you. No question is off limits. So if you, when you find me, hit me with a DM. I respond. I love the interactivity. So thank you for giving me this platform. And best to you with your podcast. I think thank this you. is such important work. And we really have a nice, democratic, beautiful way of getting our voices heard out there. So keep it up. Absolutely. Lisa, thank you for everything. Cool. Thanks. Hey, you have a good night. Bye. Bye.